So before we get into this week's video guys, I just want to give a massive shout out to the names that you're seeing on the screen just now. These people support me on Patreon and if you want to support me on Patreon as well, the links will be in the video description below. But for just now, let's get on to this week's vlog. bringing you another vlog and today I know I already told some of you on Twitter that I adopted a haggis and some of you were very confused so that was about five or six days ago now I believe and you were like I thought haggis was a food and you'd be right it is a food it is also a wild green goat that runs about the highlands with its, its front leg shorter than its back but before we get started guys if you love haggis and you're a fan of adopting and rescuing animals then give that big thumbs up button a press for me because it really helps me out. I have to shout out Victoria Rachel and Munchies Place who are two YouTubers that do videos about rodents. Mainly hamsters, gerbils, mice etc. I have been watching these two YouTubers for about a year now. I grew up, I had gerbils when I was little Upon watching most of these videos though, I realised that my gerbils were not kept in the best conditions. I had the worst possible cage for them. But anyway, watching these two YouTubers has made me think, especially since I went into lockdown, about potentially getting another pet. It's been something that's been playing on my mind for a very, very long time now about having a pet in the, in the house. So Munchie's Place is a home for hamsters. She fosters hamsters and she rescues them from really terrible situations. And the more and more I've consumed her content, Content, the more and more I've realised that wait a minute I could probably give a hamster a really happy and healthy home so seeing some of the conditions that the hamsters that she rescued were in I was like right I can do so much better than that I could do so much better I started looking at cages and I started looking I started doing so much research and thankfully because of their channels uh, I had all the information that I really needed to know what I was getting myself in for and I wanted to get gerbils because I had them when I was little now the original plan was to get a pair or three gerbils that I could name after some of my favourite anime characters. They weren't even going to be mentioned on YouTube, but like maybe a shout out, but I wasn't going to do a video or anything about it. However, something happened, something changed, and this is the story of how I adopted Haggis. So I always knew that I wanted to rescue. I kept my eye out on gum tree ads and things like that, and pets for homes, and there are lots of places online that you can go to look. Gum tree seems to be the most active for people letting pets go. And at the time there were no ads, so I was like, right, that's fine. And I went to my local pet store because I was like, right, I'm going to go and get like a couple other toys because I didn't have enough chews. I want to have everything there and ready just in case. So, and pets at home have stopped selling hamsters, gerbils, etc. They're not selling anything over the period of lockdown. So as I was walking around my local pets, pets at home, all the little bowls in the cages were turned over. So I went looking around the shop for just extra chews and things to buy. At the very back of the store, there is an adoption section. And as I walked past, I noticed a sign on it that said that there was a hamster for adoption called Cheeky. Now Cheeky to me is a name that you would associate a child giving a pet, right? It's probably not a name that many adults would come up with, I don't think, maybe, maybe. Now the thing that really broke my heart was the day underneath from when he had been put in here. I think it was like the 2nd or the 3rd of May. And hamsters only live for about two, two and a half years. So two months, he'd been there for two months in this tiny little pets at home cage with a food bowl, a water bowl, and then a flying saucer and a hide. And that was all he had in his cage. And the flying saucer wheel I know wasn't appropriate because I've watched all these hamster channels. He was a Roborovsky hamster and a robo needs a wheel that isn't gonna make them go skating off flying because they're fast. They're the fastest hamster breeds out there. I knew from my research that I didn't want a robo. If I was going to get anything, I was not ever going to get a robo. That was not what I was out to get because they are hard to handle. They're very fast. They're very skittish. They're very timid. They're tiny. They're cute. They're very cute. They're much more watch them animals than they are interact with them animals. So I looked at it and I was looking at the date and I was like, oh. And, and because I couldn't see his wee face, I was like, nope, I can be strong and step away. So I stepped away. And I was walking around the store and I picked up like a little food bowl. It was like a sandy coloured food bowl that I thought, oh, this will go with the desert theme section of the tank that I'm building. And I picked up one or two little bits. And then this family walked in. And you know the family I'm talking about. You know. We've all met this family. Big dad, big mum, 
and two daughters that clearly get almost everything that they ask for. And I say that, and it's probably a very judgmental thing to say, but <laughs> straight away they were like, we want a hamster, I'm getting a hamster. I want the pink cage, I want that cage. And this cage that they were pointing at was tiny. It was so small. It was like, how pets at home can sell cages that small for hamsters is beyond me. Like, for those of you watching that don't know much about hamsters, hamsters in the US require a minimum of 450 square inches. And in the UK, I think it's like 620 square inches or 630 square inches. One of the 620 square inches, yes, because my cage that I have is 630. But that's what they need, minimum. And that's because they travel a lot at night. They like travel for miles and miles out in the wild. So anyway, I knew all this and I was like, oh God. But they were like hovering around the section of where the animals are usually for sale and the girls were getting visibly upset because there was no hamsters for sale and I was like, oh no, they're gonna ask the staff and then the staff's gonna take them to this tiny little Roborowski at the back that's been in here for like two months and he's probably been owned by kids before because his name is Cheeky and goodness knows how they treat him and why he ended up here. Maybe he bit them, maybe something happened. Like, I, I, I was, uh, I was, I was, I was in that store and I had a decision to make. I had everything that I needed to give a hamster or a gerbil a really good home. And I was like, right, <laughs> I, I can't, I, just, I physically couldn't do it. I, I couldn't walk out of that store. So <laughs> I straight away went to a member of staff because I could hear them ready to make the decision. They were like, where is somebody? Like, can you see somebody? Can you see something? Go and look for somebody, go and look for somebody. And so I ran to the member of staff that was there and I, I spoke to her, I was like, I'm here to inquire about the hamster that you've got for adoption at the back. And she was like, oh yeah, okay, come with me. So she took me up the back. She was like, oh, it's like a robo. Have you had hamsters before? And she was asking me all these questions. Have you got your cage set up? Have you got this, that, and the next thing? She didn't ask me how big the cage was or anything like that. But I was like, yep, got it all. I've not had hamsters before, but I've had gerbils. But I know a lot about hamsters. And I, I told her about the research I'd been doing. So she was happy with that. She lifted up his hide and she moved some of the bedding. And all I saw was with like a tiny pink nose and just this little confused face. And my heart just melted uselessly. I was like, I made the right decision. And she was like, okay, are you wanting them? I was like, yes, I'm taking them. So she put them in the little pets at home box. She put clumps of his bedding in. She took him down to the till and when I picked the box up, it was, it was so light, you could, be, you could barely even tell there was anything in it if you didn't hear the wee scratching of his little claws. I was like, oh, he's so small and cute, you guys. Anyway, these are probably wanting footage of him. It wasn't until the drive back home, we had a 30 minute drive back home, and you could tell he was scared. So I was talking to him all the way back, and I could see his little nose poking out the little air holes at the top. And I have no footage of any of this because I didn't take my camera because I didn't think any of them was going to happen. I thought it was just going to get some toys. Anyway, I came back, I put them down for like 10 minutes quickly. I already had the bulk of stuff in, like I had the sand down because it's, when you first put it in, it's like it needs to settle. So I already had the sand down, I already had a, a, a bit of the bedding in, so I put more bedding in, I put like the final touches in, uh, the wheel, etc. And I picked the little box up, I put it down and I opened it and it is the footage that you're going to see right now is of little haggis. Now I decided his name in the drive back because I was like, there is no anime name from any of the characters from my favorite anime that I could name you that would fit. He's like got this really gorgeous brown and sandy coloring to him that you're seeing right now and he's, and I was like, it just didn't suit him. Like none of the names I could think of would suit him because gerbils come in all kinds of colors. You've got black, ginger, white, you've got lots of different colors. And then a lot of my favorite characters have hair colors that match. So I would have been able to find names for them, no problem. But for him, it just didn't suit. And I was like, no, you're you're too cute. Like I could just eat you up. <gasps> I'm gonna call you Haggis. <laughs> and the name just fit because Haggis is Brownish, yeah, it's brown. I'd say it was brown. And 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 oh, he was so cute. Now this little guy, I'm going to say that he had, he's never seen sand before, because what you're seeing right now is his first time noticing the sand section of his enclosure. And you can see the way he's really curious, very apprehensive. It's clear he's never encountered this before, and yet. 
Robos are desert hamsters, so they should absolutely have at least a sand bath in their enclosure because that's how they clean themselves. Every hamster should have a sand bath in their in their enclosure, especially gerbils and especially robos. So what you're seeing is him, you know, absolutely loving his sand. <laughs> He's been very timid. He's been incredibly timid. He goes, he wakes up at about a, somewhere between 11 and quarter to 12 at night and then he's in bed by about seven ish when I'm getting up. So they're not they're not nocturnal, they're crepuscular, however he is very kind of nocturnal because of his sleep schedule. Now that could also just be because he was stressed out of his little mind and no wonder he's been confined to this tiny cage goodness knows what he's been through before that uh, and and then he's coming a 30 minute drive with me and then he's been put in a brand new place so he had fun exploring for a little bit but then he became very very timid <laughs> and um i would say hello to him in the morning i just started talking to him and, and speaking to him and try to get him to get used to my voice and my sister came round to stay with me the other night and she was here whilst he was awake and she saw how terrified he was. He's very, very, very scared. He seemed to be scared more by the fact there were two of us, I think, or maybe it was a voice that he didn't recognise because he was never usually that timid with just me. I go in at two in the morning or three in the morning to sit with him for a little while and he would be running on his wheel just fine, he would eat in front of me, he would clean groom himself in front of me but I would never put my hands in that wasn't why I was there I'm not there to poke and prod him he's not there for my amusement I've been taking things very slow he seems to be far less scared of of me than when I first got him so we're taking this as baby steps and if he is not a hamster that I can handle and hold that's fine that wasn't why I got him I got him to save his to save him from a miserable existence. That was why I got him. That was why I rescued him. That is the story of how I adopted a haggis. So <laughs> If you guys want to see more pictures or videos of haggis, goodness knows I'll be bombarding them all over on my Instagram, probably in the Instagram stories. I love him, he's so cute and his little personality started coming out now. Loves his sunflower seeds as all hamsters do. He took the peanut and then got rid of all the red skin off it and ate the peanut and, and just discarded the red skin on the lovely sand that I just cleaned. So I'm going to say I can understand where the cheeky name did come from. But anyway, so guys I'll keep you posted if anybody wants to know, wants to keep up to date with how Haggis is doing then follow me on Instagram, my socials will be, be appearing down there. And don't forget to click that subscribe button, it is free to subscribe to our YouTube channel and I put up a new video every single week. Tell me all about your rescue animal or your adopted animal, I'd love to know in the comments down below. You will all also see some fantastic artwork done by John over there so massive shout out to John he sent me this last night it is amazing and it is me in a I'm going to butcher the name of the outfit it's like a shun, shunken suede shunken suede it's the shinigami uniform of the bleach characters it, 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 it doesn't matter and now you'll see some of my other videos appearing down below but that's all I've got time for guys so I will see you next week with another vlog and until then Taste you back, guys.